red light has gone out in the universe. Worlds annihilated. Lanterns, we face an unprecedented danger. An enemy powerful enough to destroy entire civilizations. To fight this enemy, the ring chose a human. But I don't need to tell you your duty. Well, now this is the Green Lantern that the fans have been waiting on. If it was on TV. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't think this is the Green Lantern the fans have been waiting on. It's a Green Lantern, that, which is more than the fans have gotten so far. Yeah, as a Green Lantern fan, one of the uh, before mentioned fans. I thought you were going to say as a Green Lantern. <laughs> no. Uh, no, it is not the Green Lantern we've been waiting for. In it, brightest day and blackest night, I prayed to God they wouldn't fuck up the Green Lantern tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because I don't know what that was in my sight. I, I was about to say, yeah, this is, this is about as black as a night gets for you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think you didn't charge your ring up all the way. Dude, yeah, I, uh, that's how I feel right now. I feel like my ring just fucking like, fell, got a little, My ring just fell in the goddamn toilet. I know. You got a little Green Lantern stand over there. It's gone. I know. I'm kind of like (laughs) bummed out, even though I didn't see a horrible movie tonight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, It's one of those where like, man, I wish I could hate it or love it. Mm-hmm. And it's just yeah. it refuses to go one way or the other. The so, worst part about it is that in and of itself, because yeah. there are stuff about it that's really genuinely cool. And the stuff that so isn't cool, just you're like you you're doubly mad at it. Cause you're like, yeah. you know what? There's enough here to make me mad that you didn't make figure out a way to make it work. Because if there had been nothing, if it was just like shit, mm-hmm. we'd be like, eh, whatever, who cares? It was trash. Yeah, well, you yeah, know, this what? just felt like wasted potential. If they had yeah. made the movie with Jack Black like they started, oh, uh, <laughs> then we would know how we felt about it. <laughs> yeah, or it maybe it would have been cool. I don't know. You I know, don't, who knows? Because I don't looking, think so. Because I'm, I'm looking at this, <laughs> see. Again, I'm the guy that they need to like sell this movie to. I'm right. the guy that needs to go in and say, I don't understand Green Lantern. Green Lantern's kind of silly to me. Mm-hmm. And I need to come out and like, damn, Green Lantern's dope, man. <laughs> Shit, that yeah. dude's badass. I'm, I'm sorry, I have a dad at you, Green Lantern. <laughs> you cool with me, man. That's but, just the bomb. But, but yeah. you should not come out doing that. <laughs> yeah. That's the point. Yeah, no, I would not come out doing that. Just <laughs> talking to random people. Dude, Green Lantern's hype, man. Hey. Well, it, it is funny that uh, me and Cyrus and, and co hosts all went in our Green Lantern shirts all pumped up. <laughs> I know, that's we why I sat like five rows away all, from me. All I thought was like, nobody's going to be a dork enough to wear their fucking Green Lantern shirt tonight, so I'm going to wear mine. <laughs> oh, no. Wrong, man. I watched that theater tonight. It looked like the Green Lantern Corps had rented out the theater because there was <laughs> yeah. so many nerds in there with Green Lantern shirts. <laughs> yeah, there was. I'm like, damn, I could just turn right around and probably uh, see a better movie. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the, the crazy thing, though, is that I, I keep I keep hearing, like, oh, nobody, nobody knows that Green Lantern's coming out. Nobody knows who the fuck he is. But I actually had a guy today, like, come up to me and go, hey, man, that movie, Green Lantern. When's it opening up? And I'm like, well, shit, t- a couple of days, buddy. <laughs> well, that's funny because somebody came up to me and they said, man, when is the Mask 3 coming out? That movie, <laughs> yeah. right? That's it, right? But Ryan Reynolds, he's the new Mask. <laughs> yeah. All these people just coming up yelling at y'all. Hey, hey, boy, <laughs> is that giant turkey still in the window? Now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you say, go fetch me the biggest turkey in that window, young lad. <laughs> hey, little robot. <laughs> is that ham still up in H-E-B? <laughs> but you yeah. know what, man? Let me. I got... I got one word for the people. Well, actually, it's probably three words. But uh, for the people who wrote this script, produced this movie, and filmed it, space, homie, space. Because everything that was in space was cool. Or yeah. had the potential to be cool. Actually, right? yeah. I yeah. thought I loved all the space stuff. Yeah. It was just every time it was just Hal Jordan hanging out on the planet, you're like, <laughs> this is lame. Well, Go like, back to outer space. Yeah, yeah. Earth, Earth pretty much in this movie is represented by Tatooine, where you always hated in the Star Wars movies when they had to go to that fucking <laughs> desert planet. And that's how I felt like every time they went back to Earth, I was like, oh, not this again. This is the same feeling I had when I watched, and I'll bring it up again, Masters of the Universe. Yeah. I don't want to see yes. He-Man hanging out on Earth. I want to see him doing his thing on Eternia or wherever the fuck he's supposed to be fighting skeletons. Can we all, can we officially call this He-Man syndrome? Yes. When you have like a cool <laughs> planet you, that you can stay on, but you decide to save money by going to Earth. Exactly. It's, it's yeah. funny because mm-hmm. it, it, it's exactly what I thought Thor was going to do and didn't do. But mm-hmm. my problem with it, with, with what they do with the space scenes, is like when they're on Oa, there's two sets for Oa. There's the set where all the lanterns stand around chanting and the, and the bridge yeah. where they, they train Hal. And every time they cut back to Oa, it's only one of those two sets. Well, no, three because mm-hmm. there's the place with the guardians, yeah. the little guardian circle. Okay. So and you three. forgot when they okay. did the fly around, which was badass. Yeah. yeah. Now, before we get well, too deep into this, on, I, I guess okay. people, for, for people who are like me who didn't really mm-hmm. know anything about Green Lantern, 
you know, sum it up kind of quickly. And there's an alien. What a nerd. I know, man. <laughs> what an asshole. Read a comic book, you idiot. Um, there's this, That's uh, what it's like now. You know the tables have turned. I hate to tell you. You're the nerd, Corey Coleman. We have yeah, control. Yeah, we're going to have to put you in a death camp. I, I think Scott Pilgrim cr- proved that wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, this nerd renaissance, it ain't real. I know. Well, that's yeah, you that's keep the hipster t- renaissance. Yeah, you keep telling yourself that while <laughs> Thor and all these other Corey, people. don't worry. I'm that one nerd that's still kind of cringe every time. I see somebody try to fight that battle. Oh, I'm I like, know. hey guys, we don't have the artillery for that just yet. Calm, you, you ain't calm gonna tell down. me. I, I still yeah. see it. Yeah. <laughs> we don't but have not. the artillery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? My power ring lights up. <laughs> yeah, no. Whatever it, my construct is. <laughs> so this, this badass purple alien uh, called Abin Sir. Mm-hmm. Even got cool as name, Abin Sir. He should open up Abin a, Sir. Yeah, Abin Sir. He should open up any restaurant. Like, God damn it! It's Sir Abin. <laughs> it does uh, like an African name though. It is. He should be Shaka Zulu or something. Yeah. You know, uh, the actor for that is Tamura Morrison. You've seen him. I think he, the guy is like uh, he's Jango Fett in the Star that's Wars. It. That was mm-hmm. him. That's oh, right. that guy. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, he's a badass purple alien in this. That's right. He has defeated like the biggest baddest the. Uh, Villain in like I don't know twenty five quadrants or something. Like the twenty eight known galaxies. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And he's the only one to bring him down. Parallax, and Parallax busts loose one day. I don't know how he just gets so mad. Like I'm tired of this shit. Ah, you know. And he comes after Abin Sir. And he, the shittiest he, prison ever. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, you, you literally walk on it and it breaks apart. It's yeah. like it's almost like leaving the gate open to a prison cell and saying, "Well, if you could break out these handcuffs, you're free to go." Yeah. Right. And so, yeah, Parallax comes after Abin Sir and, and mortally wounds him. Now Abin Sir says, "I got to land at the nearest planet, which is Earth." He lands and he, and he says, "Look, I'm fucked. I'm gonna die. I'm out in the sticks. What the fuck? Yeah, what am I gonna do? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's like if you and I were driving and our car broke down in Alabama. Yeah, yeah. it'd be time to just send yeah. our rings on to somewhere. You ain't making it out. Exactly. No, you he ain't was, getting he's definitely at the edge end of space. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he says, "Ring, fly off and find the next guy for the job. You know what to do. Mm-hmm. You know how to find this guy. And that next guy is a cocky ass ace pilot." called Hal Jordan, played by Ron Reynolds. And that, Hal Jordan is such a rebel, such a, you know, such a confident guy that he does, he, he, he just crashes a jet plane. <laughs> you know, he's like, he, he's hey, Iceman. He's, yeah, he's, he's up like, there flying with the top guns. Yeah, yeah, like, hey, man, what the fuck? That plane costs millions of dollars. Like, hey, you I want my money. Yeah, we just shit. I, I do what I had to do. You know, <laughs> that's a play thing for me. Give me, you, hey, y'all can give me another one, right? <laughs> so, I thought there was a bungee cord attached to the plane. Yeah, yeah. So you, you look at Hal Jordan, it's like, Wow, this is the guy that's going to defend the galaxy against the biggest villain out there. And, you know, even when he goes to train, who's the, Mark Strong plays Sinestro. Sinestro. Yeah, Sinestro. Sinestro even looks at him and says, you know, you, you humans, I don't get y'all, but you, you are shitty. You mm-hmm. disgust me. You, well, you got my friend. You, you wearing my friend's dead, my dear friend's ring. Yeah. You know, I have oh, no confidence. You are not worthy to wear that ring. I was going to say, yeah. that's his issue is because his best friend was the guy who died. Yeah. He's like, he's just pissed about that more than anything. Yeah. He's like, fuck you, crappy little monkey. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. Like, taking my friend's ring. I don't care what yeah. the ring says. You yeah. give that shit back right yeah, now. That, that, <laughs> that ring hired a Jerry Springer watching motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> and, but you know what? Hal Jordan is. There's a sense of the top. As there are to all assholes, there, there is a sensitive side of that person that makes them who they are. And Hal Jordan had to see his father burn up in flames one day when he was a kid. So going up against <laughs> so, Over Nacho Grande? No, I'll never get over Nacho Grande. No, 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 no. <laughs> that was that scene from Airplane. What he's doing, he's flying and suddenly he's like remembering the horrible crash that traumatized him. I'm like, holy shit, it's Airplane, the movie. Well, it, it, it is <laughs> yeah. funny that like he he freaks out flying the plane because he sees a, a picture of his father in the cockpit. It's like, um, you're the one who put that picture there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I wonder why you're freaking out now. Yeah, maybe you want to get rid of that <laughs> and get rid of those fireworks in the back seat you got there too. But yeah, he sees this in, in bad flashback, I might add. He sees his father burn up in a fiery crash. And so not only does he have to prove himself as being the next Green Lantern and, and a human one at that, but he also has to get over his fear of what he saw as a child, and which is kind of hard because he's going up against a villain that feeds on fear. And I have to say that, you know, it's funny because when, when they went to Oa, the planet, it's, it's two, two letters, O-A, Oa, that's mm-hmm. the planet of all the lanterns. I've been sent to welcome you here. And here is... Welcome to our This planet has been our home for countless millennia. 
Since time immemorial, the Green Lantern Corps has served as the keepers of peace, order, and justice throughout the universe. To be chosen to join its ranks is the highest of honors and the greatest of responsibilities. Yeah. Yeah, that part I heard about. When they went there, it was badass, man. They had all kind of aliens that were sitting in the background. I mean, they even had like little flies that had Green Lantern mm-hmm. shirts on. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. You know, all of them had the cool ring. I think even mm-hmm. Gollum had that ring. He was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's a lantern. But- man, Gollum would have lost his shit. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they had yeah. a mall. There was nothing but sharper image stores. <laughs> 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 That's like, all those aliens look like yeah. the theater tonight, by the way. And, uh, no shit. But yeah. you, you know. The, the next build.com. Yeah, that's going to be the next build.com. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm looking at them and Sinestro gets up and gives a speech and says, look, you know, Parallax is loose. We are the biggest, baddest th- heroes in the universe. We know what to do. And they all lift their rings up in the air, flash a green light. I'm like, yeah, go get them. <laughs> and they cut back to Earth and you don't ever see that big battle <laughs> right. ever. Well, it was poker night. so <laughs> Come on. It, it does seem like being in the Green Lantern Corps is a lot of like puffing your chest up and talking like you're a badass. But you don't really leave the planet. <laughs> you just shine your ring up like, a, you know, like cutting on a cigarette lighter at a concert. Well, they did yeah. actually show them go after Parallax, if you remember. And get their and they asses, got their asses handed to So what yeah. do they do? They're like, you know what? We're just going to hide out here. I know. Yeah. And on top of that, it was only like he yelled to a whole like – Concert of Green Lanterns, and it was five of them that went up there, and I was yeah. like, "That's it." You really? There's like, yeah, there's a ten thousand Green Lanterns, and you like send five of them against the most dangerous thing the universe <laughs> yeah. ever got against. Like, who are what supposed to be? That? Yeah, who are used to? Who are supposed to be like the greatest warriors? Or at least these five that were picked, and you're like. Really? That's the greatest you got? Okay. I, mean, I also kept thinking, like, okay, these Green Lanterns, they're supposed to, like, protect different sectors of the universe. Mm-hmm. So if they're all collected on the planet, who's protecting those sectors? Yeah, yeah it was almost yeah. like Mark Strong and Sinestro, like, come on, let's go. He turned back and ain't nobody there. Where are these motherfuckers yeah. at, man? Yeah. I mean, they're like, oh, come on, y'all. Yeah, they're space cops. They're like real cops. They just sit around eating donuts all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were giving tickets out that day. Yeah. <laughs> you're going a little bit fast there in the 21st quadrant, but you know, I, it's, it, it's even like they switch crews. Like when they're on, when they're on Oa, the planet with all the aliens, they got their best A team directors, cinematographers, mm-hmm. script writers, you know, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. When they go down to Earth, they get second AD units to film all yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. get TV writers. They get, because once they go to Earth, that's when you, you call, she was saying, that's when mm-hmm. the editing gets choppy. Oh, that's yeah. when, that's when that you, you get a, a lot of bad music for this film that's supposed to be so orchestrated. A yeah, lot and of- the thing is, the, the sad thing is, I think it's, uh, who is it, James Newton Howard? Yeah, yeah that's who, it. Who's worked on The Dark Knight, all, The Dark Knight and Batman Begins, along with a number of other, you know, scores. Are you sure that's Which, Hans No, no, Zimmer. no, it, it's him, yeah. Well, Hans Zimmer did the score. Oh, wait, 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 uh, Howard Shore. Is it Howard? Howard Shore did The Lord of the Rings. Okay, no, no. Then it's then it's James Newton Howard. You this can is look James it up. Newton Howard. No, James but Newton Hans Howard Zimmer did, this. did the Dark Knight. Yeah, no, but he also did uh, the Dark Knight with both movies with Hans Zimmer. It was two people who worked on that soundtrack. Okay, yeah, yeah on both films. Yeah, uh, both those guys. I'll but take a word for it. it's James Newton Howard who worked on the soundtrack and the score, and it was not. It was not a good score. It was not a memorable score. Not but at that's all. really the problem. There's so much about this that isn't memorable. Mm-hmm. Like, there's all these attempts to be funny at points that really are awkward and unfunny. I mean, there's yeah. one point is a transition between scenes mm-hmm. that's supposed to leave with one of those big audiences laughing. So there's a moment pause with a scenery shot after so the audience can laugh. Yeah. And not a single person in the whole audience laughed. You could just hear this sort of uncomfortable. <coughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> like, by, by the way, co host. Uh huh. You were full of right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, thank you. It was James Dune Howard who did All right, thank you. Yeah, uh, no, it's, uh, it be, it's, it's almost like that scope that they had for all the space stuff. It's almost like it's, it's not even the same director. It's somebody who like, seemed to have a TV sensibility when they were directing all the interactions between the people, yeah. how they frame the shots, mm-hmm. how, how the um, – uh, even down to like the scenery in some parts, like I felt exactly that way. Well, yeah. I felt like I was watching a TV show well, when it was on Earth and a actual movie in outer space. Well, here's the thing: as I was telling these guys, because I kept having that feeling too, like that music, it felt more like TV music. Everything else had those TV sensibilities. Now, even though it was Martin Campbell, who's a great act, movie action director, the movie is written and produced by Greg Berlanti and Greg Guggenheim, Mark Guggenheim, Mark Guggenheim, who do who did. Uh, no Ordinary Family, the TV series. Mm. And, and I, it was like, at the time I was watching it, there were times it kept making me 
think of that series because just in the way, like the speech that Hal Jordan makes, it's that kind of TV writing, the kind of stuff that they did where they're writing superheroes from 15 years ago before we had movies like Spider-Man, X-Men, Thor, all, all these other new, you know, there's a whole mm-hmm. new paradigm. Dark Knight changed everything, mm-hmm. but not to these guys. They still, no. They're still looking back when you could just do a little bit. Yeah. People were so happy to have whatever they had, and it was cute. But there's not it, a it, single heroic line in this film. No. There's attempts to do heroic lines, but man, there's some of the worst heroic lines ever written for yeah. us. Well, I, I couldn't tell if they were like trying to hold back on some of that, on some of that dialogue. It seemed like, uh, oh, here's... We're going to fool you into, into going into con- a, a, a conventional route that you're used to seeing in these superhero movies, but we're not. We're going to pull it back. It's, we're going to try to do something different, and they don't. I yeah. mean, it's like everything seems so like shorthanded in this film, especially dealing with the characters, the plot, and the situation. It seems like they try to get you in it, and as soon as they do, the, the one thing they do right is – they get these characters right. They get the they get good actors to play these characters, and they set up the situation where it's like this has the potential to be a great film. Well, you know, but they just they just kind of throw it away. There's two things. There's two things that could have covered that. Yeah. Uh, if you have if you have uh, a lot of scenes that are not you, if you're not going to concentrate on a lot of the epic battles, the space stuff, the heroic scenes, then you're you're going to have to like make it up with your drama. Mm-hmm. And they don't really do that there. I mean, I look at things like, you know, I don't want to compare this movie too much to the films as its own thing. But, I, you know, an example of that is looking at both like, uh, you know, Dark Knight that goes without saying. A lot mm-hmm. of that, you know, all the relationships in there were were pretty intriguing. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we were into that. Uh, or you look at Thor where, okay, you know, you had people who actually brought Shakespeare, you know, or Shakespeare, mm-hmm. Shakespearean acting to a comic book movie. And that whole thing with Loki, you know, you felt mm-hmm. that kind of pain there, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then... With Thor being down on Earth, well, their gimmick is that it, they got a lot of the good humor from being like a big fish out of water story. That's that's not what we have here. But if you can't get the drama right, make it up with a cool ass villain. Mm-hmm. And in this one, you don't really have that. You got two things in this movie that just don't seem effective at all. You got a guy with a nutsack for a head and galactic, <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and galactic <laughs> diarrhea. You know what I mean? I mean that, and neither one of them seen that, uh, you know, that big of a threat. Uh, Hector Hammond is played by Peter Sarsgaard. Yeah. And, he know Leon. You were saying this. He knows Hal Jordan from like a kid. Yeah. He knows. And oh, Blake Lively is in here as Carol uh, Carol Ferris. And yeah, they they, they all mentioned that they know each they other. They all grew up as like kids. Either, either they went to high school mm-hmm. or they were kids or something. Right. And there's yeah. never there never feels like the, there's something big missing there, which is that you feel that you should have Hal Jordan and Carol Ferris genuinely like who Hector Hammond was. You right. feel like that. What there, is there a scene missing here? Yeah. Where yeah. they're like, wow, yeah, we were all buddies. That's cool. And then once he's poisoned by this parallax virus or whatever it's never really clear exactly no, what happened not. there or how that works in this version of no. things but he starts getting a big uh nut forehead yeah. and, and yeah. having <laughs> powers you know you're like okay you start seeing the resentment and all that but where's like i said it's important for us to like him first well you know what they set up those two they, they set those seeds there like tim robbins is hector hammond's uh father very po- powerful politician he, sh- he there's a scene where he just Man, he just punks out Hector Hammond in front of him. He's like, "Yeah, my son's a thinker, but you know, you're more of a, more of a doer. You know, you ain't a pussy like my son." Yeah. See, and you, you, that you can nice see, moment yeah. where Hal's like, "Man, your dad's kind of a dick." It was like gets his back. He's like, "Yeah, but it's not for the thinkers." We, we could have had like and, a. Uh, 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 a Harry Osborn type, yes. of, well, a yeah. Peter Parker well, type thing so going on. Places there. where it seems to borrow from other movies, but just drop the ball when it di- yeah. does it. Because yeah, I thought about the whole Harry Osborn Peter Parker thing right there. And even then, as a character, they, the movie itself betrays that villain because yeah. it's building him up as this big villain. But ultimately, there's zero payoff for him. Yeah, really yeah. For, for what little they did with him, they should have just left him out of the movie. Yeah, they should have left him out. Yeah. 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 Well, the thing, the thing is, the guy who, who's playing uh, Hector Hammond, I thought he did a great job. Sure. I agree. It's just like it was just, like I said with every one of these characters. I mean, they they didn't give them enough to do. I mean, it's it's like the, they got the origin right, I guess. Uh, they got the idea of the character right, but they did absolutely nothing. And that's the problem with this whole movie. I mean, they, Mark Strong, who plays Sinestro, is fucking incredible. Yeah, every he's scene great. he's in, except he's only in five scenes where you're like, wow, this guy is such a powerful presence in this film i wanted to know and, more about and, sinestro and that's the thing yeah. just because you, it, for us who know who sinestro is and know how much you know his backstory is a big detriment to this whole saga of this whole green lantern thing you you're wishing like wow you got you got the perfect actor he looks fucking great do something with him don't just have him hanging out for a few scenes just float to, to cheer yeah to be the, <laughs> to be the cheerleader of the green lanterns 
Do something fucking epic with him, man. Well, I mean, show him being a fucking badass. Make that he the is. relationship with him and Hal very central to the film, and it never really is. Like mm-hmm. in you know, in the reinvention of the comics that Jeff Johns did, that a lot of this is based on, he made it so key that you know everyone knows that Sinestro eventually becomes the greatest enemy of the Lantern Corps, right? But that he started out as the greatest, one of the greatest Lanterns. Yeah, yeah. he's Adam the guy. Sewer died. He, he was the best one. Yeah, and he was the guy who personally helped train Hal Jordan and grudgingly grew to really respect and even become very close friends with them right yeah. so that whole part there is really missing not to mention there's a post credit scene that's like you know what we're gonna skip over all that friend stuff and just prepare you for the next <laughs> yeah. movie where okay. he's the bad Wait, guy which, okay, yeah, okay, which, yeah, which yeah, said, as far as the post credit stuff you know how like you stick around those marvel movies for that don't stick around this time yeah just, just, just get because yeah, well the thing is saying that too is that i mean it sucks that wow they they got the look right but there's there's nothing for me to chew on. There's really nothing. You're just showing me like highlights. It's like Green. It really is like a Green Lantern for dummies. Well, the movie uh, is a, is a big cock tease because mm-hmm. they take you. Look, man, I, it's what I'm pissed off about with the film, mm-hmm. and I, and I'm not even like a huge fan like you guys. But I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, Hal Jordan comes to. You know, oh, I start training with Kilowog, who's voiced pretty well by Michael Duncan. I'm uh, yeah, Michael man. Clark Duncan. If yeah. you have, if you just got a big old monster, just get Michael mm-hmm. Clark Duncan to do the voice yeah. for it. You know, he's done gorillas and, and all kind of shit. But here. He gets trained, uh, uh, you know. You're like, man, I'm into this, you know. Yeah, what it, man, it's it's hard to train to be a Green Lantern. <laughs> except five minutes later, Hal Jordan's like, I quit, <laughs> you know, yeah. and he just gets up and leaves. And I'm mm-hmm. like, no, stay, stay here because yeah. this is cool. Mm-hmm. And they just skip through yeah, all who this. Who would tra- leave yeah. that? Yeah, mm-hmm. he skips through all this training. We miss all this this essential storytelling of what it takes to be this legendary Green Lantern. They mm-hmm. they really compress that into like. Uh, like a few minutes of a scene and then they they, they just yeah. neglect that and I'm like man that is that is shitty for them to yeah. do that and if you, I was a fan I would yeah. be pissed yeah you talk about wow you know what just go with the fucking montage route if you can't fit, if you really can't make this make you're, this you're work right. this, you know this is, go this into a montage when a montage is needed well, yeah, it's a training it really scene. Was, that's yeah. what they're that's the one time yeah. montages are completely okay is for yeah. training scenes <laughs> but, uh, wait, for not, not, not for makeovers yeah. and trying on clothes <laughs> I guess if you like that sort of thing by the way I agree with you Peter Sarsgaard did well. A lot of people saying he that he was embarrassing himself as Hector Hammond. I was like, no, he did some no. good some good parts. Except when he was screaming like a bitch. Yeah. I was going to say about five times. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, was just I know. Say, like the first, the first time, the first time was super. The first time was super effective. Where you're yeah. like, wow, that's that's fucking that's fucking painful. And, yeah. But then when he does it for the next three times, you're like, all right, stop, all right, yeah. stop, just stop already. I was like, how, please, how can you be please. a villain, man. You know, I, you just need to leave I now. Know. Uh. <laughs> This movie makes. I mean, honestly, this movie. Even though I'm pointing out, like, we're, we're obviously pointing out a lot of the bad things. I mean, I we still, put out I, some good things. I still don't hate it. I mean, no. I, I honestly feel like a lot of this movie is on the fucking cutting room floor right now. I mean, yeah. watching it tonight, it really felt like, especially the closer you got towards the end, it felt like they chopped the shit out of it. Only because scenes end so abruptly. They do, and and a lot, of, and and there was a scene that came up. That I'm like, okay, did I? Are we missing a reel? Because how did this conflict already happen so quick without the other person knowing what exactly is going on in this scene that's happening right now? It's like, wow, okay, there seems to be something that that got cut like well, that. Well, I felt more like it was underwritten, or if it, if it wasn't underwritten, it was written in a way to where it moved slowly enough to where whoever was editing it just didn't have yeah. the, the attention span or the patience and they're mm-hmm. like this this is this no 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 nobody's gonna stick around for this well, but saying that but saying- films can succeed starting off with an explanation of everything that's happened up till now when it's the first movie right yeah. you know every once in a while you can get away with it but this was not one of those cases and you worry the moment they do that it's like okay here's the green land and Corey, here's how it works here's yeah. everything that's happened here's what parallax is you know it's like wait in their way you could have shown me this and yeah of just and, telling and, me and the thing is this is a movie yeah. where after it ended, I was like, you know, this movie needed to be like two more hours long. I, w- I would have stayed well, and the- watched it as far as who, uh, as far as like the, the, the thing that they're setting up. Uh, it's because I, I hear they're wanting, they're wanting to make this into a trilogy. Well, and I'm just they like, make everything into a trilogy. Yeah, but, yeah. And, but I'm like, you know what? You can't do that with a, trying to cram in an epic story in an hour and 45 minutes. The modern Green Lantern is a space opera in the books, and that's where they're pulling most of their material for from this. And yet, that's not the movie that they made. That's the best Green Lantern stuff for the modern definition. Yeah. And in the movie, that's the best Green Lantern stuff. But even in here, where there's that point, like he's like, oh my God, what am I going to do? There's, a, there's an implacable enemy. What should I do? Instead of going back to Oa, he goes, hey, I'm going to talk to my Earth buddies and ask them the advice. I was like, what the fuck are they going to do? And that was so crazy. They sitting around talking like, 
you know, like, man, how am I going to get my car out of the tow shop? I mean, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a big creature. Yeah, it's, a, it's about to destroy what the do. planet. Wait, what, what do you guys yeah. think I should do? I don't know. Save us? Stop it? <laughs> Maybe you should go talk to the Green Lantern Corps. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You haven't even finished training. The guys who the wield pussy. this incredible power. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there, there's a, there is a creature about to destroy the Earth, and his friends are like, well, man, why don't you at least think about saving the planet? You know, and just mm-hmm. sleep on it. And now, you know, if that was us, we would have been like, motherfucker, you better get out there and save the planet. Like, like, I ain't going to die because you're feeling yeah. depressed right now. I see that fucking thing coming right now. You Do something. Your father, I'm going to rip this shit up right yeah. now. Get your fucking ass back out in space. Mm. It don't make any sense, man. And, mm. and look, I was talking to Leon about this, and it's just like what you're saying, Cyrus. It's, it, it seems like the movie could have been an hour and mm-hmm. 30 minutes, an hour 45, two hours long, and told a story that was just fine if they had, like, Stayed in because they they're saying that they want that like hey we're making the next Star Wars with this mm-hmm. oh, I, I guess because really? they think that they have a bunch of aliens in this that they, that that's what they're doing right. what well, in order to do that they should have like left Earth at the beginning of the movie and at the end we should have just stayed on or yeah. or, yeah. or, or, or other planets just, yeah. just out yeah. out in the universe yeah out, out in other galaxies establish the the relationships between Hal Jordan Sinestro Tamari and uh, Kilowatt oh, you yeah. know what you got I mean, there yeah. you got kind of another. Thor type theme, except it's reverse. We get a fish out of water story, but it's Hal Jordan having to deal with being in these incredible worlds right. and dealing with that. And that that's so, so much more interesting. Well, yeah. yeah, but whereas Thor was stuck here and he dealt with it, Hal Jordan just went, I quit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, 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 that guy said I can't do it, so I guess I better go back home. No, no you know, not to like shit on this movie, man. Is it, it, like, is the mission of this film, like the, the, the mission statement is like, hey man, you should really try and stay at your job. Yeah, yeah, come you on, should, man. You shouldn't yeah. try yeah, what is with that shit? Stop smoking all the green. <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, and, and stay at your damn yeah. job. Get up on time. Go to work. Just don't be. That is true. Yeah. That he, seems like that's yeah. like the mission. Yeah, he was using thing. that. Yeah, he really was using that landing as a bong. <laughs> like, I'm going to smoke this shit and think about going to work. Uh, and I, I, I will say this, man. The movie, as we already mentioned, just to let you know that we're trying to be fair. Mark Strong gives a great performance. Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan I mean, Reynolds Ryan, is great. Ryan Reynolds sells a lot. Of, this is this is a great role for him because mm-hmm. it fits his personality. And all the special effects, I think, are great. Even though my only drawback with the special effects is that they look good. I have no problem with the with the way they appear when Hal Jordan does his effects. But I still think his powers are silly. Mm-hmm. You know, when he makes a race car track to stop a plane well, from crashing. Like, you know what? Mm-hmm. That's that's the thing. Like early on, I was I was impressed with how they did the constructs because that was something even in the comics that never quite a hundred percent worked for me. I was like, wow, I dig the way they're pulling it off. Mm-hmm. And even though I wasn't impressed with the movie, I was like, you know what? It's got potential until that first scene where he comes out on Earth as the Green Lantern and saves the senator, yeah. making a race car track to save the helicopter. See, and that's when I, that was the first time I felt really let down. Where it should have been uh, a spectacular. Uh, yeah. Okay, and I tell you what, Superman ruined that. For every time you introduce a superhero, you better have that Superman moment where if you're going to yeah. save a girl from a falling helicopter, it better look fucking amazing. Well, it better make you, you go wow. That and this for didn't me do that in the basis know? of this character, and I know maybe it's just because they didn't explain it as well. And I thought afterwards they tried to, which is that the the lanterns work best, not just as using them as like a laser gun, but like doing it through imagination. That's sure. why people have constructs. They're more powerful when you're doing it that way. But all that shit comes from instinct, and that was meant to illustrate well that's the way that Hal Jordan's mind works that's pretty he, like rather than sad. something else he thinks of a race car yeah, he, that's he, what he thinks because that's know, his mind but you know I, 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 can't, I, I can't present that to Corey and say look at how cool this I know, is exactly. I know because I, I, I got that I mean because I, when they, they did a scene right after that where Hal Jordan was with his best friend what was his best friend's name in the movie uh, uh, I don't know. He's not even a character yeah, in the he, comics. Yeah, I don't, he did, I don't think he, he had Random a name. Random mixed uh, ethnic guy. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> Saeed, well, anyway. I think. is it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we want to be real racist. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, 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 it's a film that has to let you know he's, your, he's his best friend by actually writing the dialogue. Hal, I'm your best friend. What? <laughs> Just yeah. so you know. Who says that to each other? The man, <laughs> hey, man, you know, I'm your best friend. You owe me this answer here. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. it's funny because in the comics, his, his best friend was uh, uh, a little Eskimo kid he called Pie Face. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then when they made the cartoon, they realized, like, oh, that's kind of racist. So they made him the same character. They just called yeah. him blue, and they made him uh, from Venus, a Venusian. Oh, really? Yeah, called Cairo. <laughs> well, that's Jeez. racist against v- Ven- yeah, cause Venusians, he, he, in it. Because he, he looked very Asian, except with pointy ears. <laughs> <laughs> and he talked he talk, he talk like this. Oh, come on, hell, Jordan. You, you Asians are aliens <laughs> yeah, to us like this. You know, I, I was going to say, they had that scene right after where he did explain, like, he's like, a racetrack, how? That's the best you could do. You realize his mind, he's an irresponsible man child. You're thinking, okay, that's what it is. I'm just saying, somehow in the movie, whenever he thinks up these things like, oh, I'm going to make a machine gun, a chainsaw, uh, a, a, a racetrack, I'm like, it. 
I really want to get past this. I know it's from the imagination, but to me, it just it, it looks silly. It just this hero just doesn't like relate and to me. In that's live a central conceit of Green Lantern. If you can't get past it in this, you're not going to get past it. Well, in you know what? Well, you Green know what? Lantern, saying so. that though, the comics do a better job than the movie did as far as the con- constructs and things like that. Because well, when, I, don't I, when I when I read those con- but when I read those comics, I'm I'm scrutinizing what kind of stupid shit they they want to draw <laughs> to save the day. Yeah. And I ne- and you know, there's never a moment where I read those uh, Green Lantern going, okay, that's real stupid. You know, because if I, it was stupid, I wouldn't be in. I tell Green you Lantern. what, man, yeah. I probably could have accepted it more this is the one this is one of the few times i would say maybe if the effects weren't so detailed mm-hmm. you know they came from his imagination maybe it was a semblance of a machine gun mm-hmm. or a chainsaw or a racetrack but mm-hmm. you know they they you can see the machinery the gears and everything mm-hmm. working i'm like i you know i'm just not yeah. buying it right now the thing is if i can think of something cooler to do if i put myself in hal jordan's shoes in that movie i would have thought of a hundred things way cooler than what they did in the movie <laughs> yeah. oh, and, man, and if Carlos, i'm thinking it if only and they're not they green fucked lantern. it up well, yeah. let's all vote. raise your hands who wants goes to be green lantern <laughs> well it, it does i like, actually do i think he would Think of some cooler stuff. I think he'd make a better movie. Yeah, God man. You'd be, if I was a superhero, this is what I'd do. But I want Batman. But I want to be dead but I, by now. But I want to be Batman. <laughs> I know. I fucked the Joker up by now. He wouldn't cause no more trouble. Yeah. Let, make me Batman. Yeah. You know what, man? Punk. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I tell you what. For my rating, I, again, I don't hate it. I. It, it, as somebody who's not a Green Lantern fan, I was like, I really want to learn to like this character more, and this movie didn't allow me to do that, and I'm mm-hmm. angry about that. But all that stuff I saw in space was really cool, so I will rent the DVD and watch that part over mm-hmm. and over again. Uh, it's 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 a high rental for me. It's uh, you know what it, it it never it never did anything impressive. I mean, I even though I liked pl- there's plenty of things in it I, I like much much like you guys. Uh, like I said, the the way they did the constructs and stuff here and there, and all the actors were good. I have no problem with any one of them. Um, it's frustrating that it would have all the pieces to make a good movie, and yet, I mean, I don't know. I think it's a perfect movie for a Green Lantern fan who's eleven years old. Yes. By, by all means, it, this this is this is your movie. Anybody older, eh, I I put it at a high rental also. Yeah, a high rental is definitely the 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 key of the day because it's not good enough to go see in the theater. It's not impressive enough to see in the theater. Certainly, a three D is not really that big of a deal for it either. I mean, it's not as annoying as it was in Thor, right? Uh, but it's still like I just forgot it was in three D most of the time. Well, that three D um, was useless. Yeah, it was yeah. just mm-hmm. a, yeah. Oh, really? It's three D. Okay, it, it's funny. It, but, it, and Thor used most of three D on the credits. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know, I mean, it's funny. They've got all these little pieces that are really cool. But then the glue that should hold them together is entirely conspicuously absent. I mean, there's sequences that scenes end and you just feel like they're just kind of standing there waiting for the next (laughs) scene to start (laughs) in in just such a blatant and obvious way. Uh, There's lots of dialogue, just major missteps in here that you're like, wow, that's it's actually awkward sitting here in this audience watching them say some of these lines, but then it would keep, it would win you back and lose you win you back and lose you. But yeah, the best thing I can say is when it comes out on DVD, by all means, rent it. Yeah. You, you should be first in line to rent it, but yeah, don't bother going to see it in the theater. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, this is tough for me. Um, I, I really, honestly, I, I would, I want to do a matinee only because the things that I did like in it, I really fucking liked. I mean, I loved. I mean, the cast, Mark Strong blew me away. I mean, I wish I wish there was enough for him to do to where he could possibly become a better villain than even Darth Vader because you you understand his determination, you know, as far as him knowing he is with the best fucking group of warriors there there that has ever existed. I love that. I love uh Hal Jordan. How he's he was kind of like almost like a neo. He didn't know what the fuck was going on. Yeah. And he 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 sold it to me, which I didn't. I was a little worried about him, but the biggest the biggest problem is the movie doesn't have a strong central villain at all, and the one villain it does have is the guy who did the fucking editing. Like <laughs> I, I don't know what he was thinking. I don't know how a director, a guy who brought me the coolest James Bond movie in a long time, Casino Royale, really could have watched this film in, in, in post and go, all right, this is good enough to put it out in the theaters. And it's disappointing, but I will give it a matinee only because I thought this, the performances were strong. All the bits were there, but I would still like to see it in the, on the big screen. You know, I, I think seeing it at home, renting it, it's still fine, but... A lot of stuff I still want to see on the big screen. You know what? Well, you ain't got to take up a Green Lantern. 
God. Tico will still be there after the movie's gone. No, yeah. you can still read your comics with pride. Yeah, yeah. yeah you ain't got to. You know what the thing is? I hope you, 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 I, you might want to get rid of that shirt. I, I'm scared. No, I can't get rid of this shirt. This, this, this. I've earned this. All right. I've earned, I've read lots of fucking. I spent lots of fucking bullshit money on stupid comic books with colors on paper. I mean, I, I, I earned this shirt. But the thing is, I like he calls I, us the, <laughs> the dumb funny book boy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's over here. Like, you're like a self-hating Jew or something. I don't know what that shit is. I would, I would. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Call me, call, call me Woody Allen Jr. But, uh, yeah. No, but I, I'm hoping I'm hoping that the next film, if this if this movie makes money, I'm hoping it'll be the great movie. I'm I'm still looking forward to. You know, the, you were talking about the villain problem, and I, God, this is so frustrating to me. But will you Marvel and DC please watch each other's movies? Because if DC had been watching Marvel's movies, they'd know that you do not turn a major villain into a cloud. You just <laughs> right. don't do that. You don't know. That's no, a yeah. terrible way. You, it didn't work for Galactus, and it got. God Goddamn Jordan doesn't work no, for Paralyzed. You, you know, the whole time I saw that, I was thinking of Galactus, but I was also thinking how Jordan can, he, he's childish, he's immature, he can mm-hmm. pop up with anything that comes to his imagination. Mm-hmm. Why didn't he just make a big old green toilet bowl to flush that, that, <laughs> yeah. that space dude yeah, down? Because that's what he looked like, big old space turd. I know. A big, I a big a floating fan. space. Yeah, yeah. A fan. A fan. A fan. A fan. Yeah. <laughs> and then he could go back to O and go, and that's how you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Humans! Yeah. <laughs> If you die, innocent lives will be lost. Your world will be annihilated. Help me save my planet. Fight it. Fight it with me. Brightest day. Blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power. Green lantern. <laughs> 